guys, Cass here from Giveaway Studios, and on this one, I'm gonna show you guys how to turn these 75 pieces of, well, 74 pieces of foam in one 3D printed part into this, I don't even know if this fits in the frame, this Gormagala gauntlet from Monster Hunter. And it has removable fingers that are magnetic, as you can see, and also a removable whatever this is on the sides, as well as a light up eye thing on the top of the hand. All right, so yeah, let's get it. All right, so we're gonna start off with one of the harder things to do, which is these pieces that go kind of on the side right here. We're going to dremel these down to this three-dimensional shape here. So uh, these lines that you see here in the middle are guidelines as to where the peaks of uh, the curves are. So this is the very top. So you're gonna be dremeling towards that peak and making the edges as deep as possible to kind of get to this point. That's pretty much really the only way I can explain it is just carving and giving it uh, the shape pretty much with your Dremel and using different bits. So I'm gonna go ahead and run through that process real quick and I'll catch you guys for the next. So here is the result. As you can see, I have my bevel where my line used to be. Okay, I just kind of got it there. Uh, and I mean, there's not really any crazy trick to it really. I kind of start from the edge and work my way in. So I kind of bevel the edge, bevel the edge, bevel the edge until I kind of work my way into the line there and just smooth it out as I go. Now I'm gonna grab a stone bit and just kind of smooth this down a little bit and then attack the others. It took me about five minutes uh, to shave this down to size. So uh, you could potentially get this done in like 15, 30 minutes. stop this here you guys can already see the difference the uh, stone bit does versus the sandpaper that I had on this side so it's getting a lot smoother I'm gonna go ahead and do that same thing on the other side and then finish up the other two All right. so again once we're done with those pieces you can see the difference between uh, the one that you get with a DIY kit or uh, obviously, if you've purchased the pattern, you can uh, choose to transfer this line onto your piece or not uh, as kind of a guide as to where you need to shave your foam. All right, so this is done, and that's the first part. All right, now we're going to seal this. Okay. Once these are sealed, we'll set these aside and we probably won't see them until towards the very end of the tutorial, okay? So next step is going to be to grab all of these pieces. Now your patterns are going to say uh, what angle to cut them out. So here, for example, uh, pinky thumb inner. As you can see here, uh, 20 degree, 55 degree, 35 degree, uh, so what you're gonna go ahead and do is bevel these edges uh, at those uh, specific uh, angles. It doesn't have to be exact, it just needs to be more or less the same. So if you take these numbers with a grain of salt, it's just kind of uh, an estimation of what uh, might work best uh, to put these together. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to the rest of these and I'll catch you guys for the next step. All right, so if we're comparing parts, this is what you would have cut out or maybe what you would have received in your kit, right? Flat edges compared to this now. You can see I've put all of the bevels on all of the sides, all right? This one being 55 degree, this one being more of a 35, and then here being a 20, okay? And as you guys saw in the fast forward, you can achieve the same thing with the Dremel, okay? Just takes a little bit of patience. So do that for all of these pieces. Okay. And as you can see, you should have two, four, six of the large ones, 
right? and two, four of the smaller ones. So one, two, three, four, five fingers total. Okay? And then we'll put these together in a little bit. We're gonna put these aside. Okay. Next up, we're gonna do the angles for all, all of our other parts. So these guys also, okay, and if you guys can tell, this is already beveled with the angles, right? This top curve has a 45 and these two bottom pieces have a 55, okay? And these pieces become these things here, okay? So this goes like that. They're gonna get glued together and come together and make these parts right here. So 10 pieces total per hand, okay? And what you're going to do is, as you can tell here at the very top, there is a bevel. So you can give that a 45 degree bevel or a 50 or 55 degree uh, bevel, all up to you. Uh, and then do that for all of your pieces. But do make sure that you do them uh, opposite sides. So if you do this on this side, flip the other one so that the angles meet each other, all right? And I am pretty sure that's all we have for bevels. Now we're going to do some prep for some of the other pieces. Now, these guys, there's a bunch of little pieces that look like pebbles and rocks and stuff, as you can see here on the bed. These are some of the smaller pieces uh, that you're going to put on your piece that are gonna correspond to this. So it's kind of like this magma rock formation that's under this bladed wing thingy. Uh, and what you're gonna want to do is, uh, if you look at the one that I've glued on here already, I've just kind of beveled the edges a little bit, okay? So it's not just, um, you know, boring old flat. It has like some dimensionality to it. And you can just do that with your Dremel and just kind of like rough up the edges a little bit for all of the pieces um, before you put them onto this, which comes much later, okay? Uh, another thing that we are going to do is for all of these, you're gonna want to grab some type of straight edge and somewhat draw a perpendicular. Perpendicular line, all right? So from that point, draw a line down to the edge that's somewhat perpendicular to this side. I know it's curved, but just kind of guesstimate. What I like to do is kind of put them back to back and then trace one long line. That way I'm sure that they register in the same position. Um, so that when we put these together, uh, they're more or less aligned with each other. Okay. So again, I'm sure you guys can tell where these lines are. Okay. Now that we have these lines, and we're gonna do this for all of these pieces, okay? Um, but now that we have this line, what we're gonna do is we're going to do a cut, an angled cut towards that center line that we just traced. So angled cut towards that center line. Okay. And what that's gonna do is leave us with uh, this excess here. I'm gonna take right out and now you can tell I have this little uh, triangle valley cut on the inside of my piece okay which is gonna allow me to fold it like this and have a nice clean uh, edge out here on the top okay we're gonna do that for all of the pieces so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through that process and catch you guys for the next step. all right so when you're done, all of your pieces should look like this, okay? Beveled edges on all sides and also the valley cut in the middle, okay? So all that's left to do is heat these up and assemble them. So we're going to use some contact cement to do so. We're going to use our heat gun, seal all of these up. 
going to do one with you guys, and then I'm going to fast forward through the rest of them. So pretty simple. I'm going to start with my seam in the middle, a little bit of contact cement. Go ahead and move that over to this side. Okay. Once your pieces are dry enough to glue, okay. I'm going to go ahead and start at the very top. Connect the top. As we connect the top, turn it over to make sure that our uh, valley cuts kind of face each other like that. One time. Okay, and then continue to glue along the edges until we reach the end. Okay, once we have that, we can glue it more on the inside. And we have our little knuckle shape thingy, okay? Obviously, if you want to get rid of the seams, go ahead and use your Dremel and sand uh, where your seams meet there real quick, all right? But that's pretty much it. They're all going to come together in the same way. Some are going to be smaller, some are going to be larger. Uh, obviously, the larger pieces go with the larger pieces. So I'm going to fast forward through the next few steps and catch you guys up next. those all done as you can see the two different sizes we have the smaller one and the larger one okay so should have a total of seven of these three of the small ones four of the larger ones and the larger ones are gonna go on the basically like on the knuckle here and then the smaller ones are gonna go on the back here on these larger plates okay? all right so we will put these aside for now. Uh, these pieces, you should have six of these and one larger piece like this one, all right? Uh, same thing as before, we're going to go ahead and bevel the edges, okay? As you can see, this is the regular one, okay? And this is the one with the beveled edge. You don't need to bevel here or here, just the two long sides, all right? and then we're gonna start gluing these together. So I'm um, gonna go ahead and bevel these last two with you guys, okay? I'm gonna grab my blade, run it right up against the edge at an angle. Okay, there we go. Have a beveled edge. Both sides and for both pieces. All right, nice clean beveled edge. That's that for this. And basically, now what we're going to do is glue all of these together. Before we do that, we're going to go ahead and heat them up. Once we have it heated, we're going to go ahead and bend it straight down the middle. Bend it in uh, kind of like a tube. Turn it around on itself. Okay, You're going to do that for all of your pieces. And then we're going to go ahead and just glue the edges to themselves and make this large piece right here that's going to go at the top. All right. On this last piece, similarly to what we did with the knuckle pieces, okay, we're gonna go ahead and draw a line from the middle of this half circle here to where this tip ends. And cut on either side of this at an angle towards that middle line. And we're gonna cut out this trench to allow this to fold right there and give us a nice clean angle at the top like so okay and now we can heat it we're gonna do the same thing for these pieces as well okay find the middle of this line trace it down to the point same thing here trace it down to the point and do the same thing. 
Okay, so uh, a little warning where you have your bevel, okay, that is where your uh, valley or trench should be. I messed up, I put my bevel on the actual surface part. I mean, I put my uh, valley cut in the actual surface and not on the underside, right? So the side where your bevel is, right? Where your bevel is headed, that's where you need to have your trench cut. So I messed up on that one, I'm gonna redo this one. All right, so these two, these the heart esque, well, and V, I, I'm not really sure what shape they look like, but we're gonna heat these up and curve them as well. So I'm gonna do one with you guys. Okay, once your foam is heated up, we're gonna go ahead and give this a bit of a curve. If you've already put your um, trench line through, be very careful doing this because you can rip the foam uh, right at the seam there. Uh, so be careful shaping it um, after the fact. Right? It's it's. I feel like it's easier to do it after the fact because it's not curved, so it's easier to get the uh, the trench line in. But um, sometimes, uh, for the sake of saving your part, you can do this. Uh, trench after after you've done it. All right, so this is what we're gonna have with this this piece same thing with this one Okay, and uh, I've already done the trench for these. We're gonna give these a slight curve also Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and glue all of our trenches. We're gonna um, Glue the center seams there piece of the puzzle. I'll go ahead and glue this like so. We have our edge. And I'm going to go ahead and start gluing all of these guys together until I have one big piece. Okay. Uh, I'm also gonna fast forward through the fingers but I'm going to show you guys how to make one of them right now, and then I will fast forward through the rest. As long as I can find, all right, cool. So yeah, I believe this is the pinky. Okay. So first we're going to heat up our parts. Okay, so everything is heated up, I'll go ahead and Curve the finger from the middle out. So I'll give it a trying to give it some dimensionality. Okay, so we're gonna go from a flat piece like this to something a little bit more dimensional. Notice how I put the curve in there. And we're gonna do that on the other side as well. And grab the contact cement. It's looking a little thick. I should probably put some thinner in here, but should be good enough for us to put this together. Out of the five base pieces that you have, right, one of the patterns is slightly smaller than the rest. I don't know if you guys can tell, you can see the ledge here. So this smaller one is the only one that's different and that belongs to the pinky. Everything else, thumb, index, middle finger, ring finger, uh, all of those have the exact same base. So we'll leave that for those and we'll continue with this guy. Okay, I think our glue is ready. So again, we're gonna start at your surface. Okay. I'll start at the fingertip, making sure that my surface connects. All right. Right. 
right at the top. So I'm reducing the amount of seams that I have. Okay, right at the top. get everything to meet up and close this up okay run your fingers on top of the seam to make sure that everything's nice and flush press them together to make sure that the inside is making contact as well and then just continue that process until we get to the very end what I like to do uh, especially since I don't have any registration marks on these pieces is I like to glue the uh, the beginning and end, and then just kind of work the foam into uh, the middle, making sure that it's evenly spaced up. Okay. There we go, and that is a semblance of a finger. Now, this piece, we're gonna heat this up, curve it as well and we're gonna glue it to the inside here. This uh, is most likely a little longer than it needs to be um, for this piece, but that's perfectly fine, that's on purpose. So uh, once you've glued it on, just cut off whatever excess there is. Now, one thing that um, I will state is that here, there's kind of a, an angled edge here. So if you can grab a Dremel and flatten that out, so that when you put it on your finger, it feels like it's sitting flat. That's what you wanna do. Right now when I put it on my finger, I can feel these edges here, which is not really what I want. I just wanna make that nice and flat. I wanna go ahead and use my drum roll. Okay, see how you can see the angle here and here you can't, that's kinda of what you want. So that when it sits on your hand, right, it sits flat without this piece, right? Nice and smooth and flat like this, but not with that bevel. So just get rid of that bevel. Okay, you got it. And you're gonna wanna do this for all of the fingers, okay? Uh, so again, I'm just doing this one with you guys, and then I'm gonna fast forward through the rest of these steps, okay? If you got the pattern and you cut out your own pieces, uh, there's no need to Dremel uh, the edge there like I just did. That's only if it's a DIY kit uh, that I sell. So these parts will be laser cut, uh, which means that they have a sealed edge, right? And you wanna kind of um, roughen up the sealed edge so that the glue has something to bite onto and stick, okay? Okay, I'll go ahead and curve this a little bit. Yeah, just going straight down the middle, curving it out onto itself. Kind of like that. You want something like this. Right? So we go from a flat piece something like this. Okay. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and put large on the other side. Okay. Our two pieces are ready. I'm going to go ahead and put these together. So what I like to do is I like to start on one side. So I will glue this at the tip and I'm focusing on the left side of the finger making sure that the other side, I have my fingers there so nothing connects until I'm ready for something to connect, all right? So I'm just gonna glide that down, right up against the edge, trying to keep it as clean as possible. Oops, I missed this part. So before I get any further, I'm gonna go ahead and start attaching this end a little bit. so that I can keep track of where I am. All right, that's good. So 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing this on the other side. There we go. Okay. Oops. Keep going. Making sure that I'm right on my seam line to avoid any major cleanups. Okay, again, right there, right on the seam line. And that should do it. All right, and if it feels a little wonky or crooked, you can go ahead and twist and bend and curve it so that it fits exactly the way you need it to, all right? And now we have a pretty decent finger, okay? And now what I'm going to do is from one edge to the other, I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark, okay? Maybe grab a ruler, get these two marks to meet up. So, okay, and now that I have that line there, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. Right. Done. Okay. Now, one of these guys is gonna go in here. But before we do that, we need to cut this at angles as well, so it could fit in here properly. So for all of these pieces, you're gonna go and want to go from this piece, this flat piece, to something that looks like this. This is about a 40 degree uh, bevel cut on the inside, okay? And once you're done with that, you're gonna shape it a little bit and we're gonna use it to fill the inside of these pieces here. Now, this being the pinky, uh, this piece is slightly too large for it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make some adjustments on the fly, okay? So while I have it in here, which is more or less the position that I wanted to, I'm just kind of taking a look at where the excess is. I'm gonna go ahead and drawing a line that I'm gonna cut out at the same angle, right? But this time with the excess removed so that it can fit into the smaller cavity of the pinky. You're not gonna have this issue for um, the other fingers because um, they're all a little wider. Remember this uh, bottom piece here is a little narrower than the other ones, which is why we need to do a little bit of an adjustment here. Okay, but super easy. All right, so I've cut off my excess, and as you can see, it fits like a glove, all right? So do remember to give these a little bit of a curve, right? So they shouldn't be straight when you try to stick them in there. They should have a little bit of a curve to them. That's gonna allow it to sit really flush uh, with this curve here at the bottom of the finger, all right? So i go ahead and put some contact cement on the inside. The trick to getting this to work is putting the contact cement while it's still pretty much wet so you can slide it in place. Let it sit in position for a little bit, um, you know, a couple minutes, and then tack it down uh, properly. Like after after a little bit so right here I'm just kind of finding my general position for everything like this like this and like this okay I'm gonna leave that as is and then I will push it all together in a little bit so that's going to be the process for all of the fingers going forward. Obviously, we have some seams here. We can go ahead with some sandpaper or a Dremel and just Dremel that down 
can get like a nice clean shape as well as uh, dremeling the top here to round it off a little bit uh, to make it a little bit less angular. All right, so I'm gonna fast forward through the step of the rest of the fingers and catch you guys for the next one. All right, so as you can see, this is what a finished finger looks like, right? And you can see the seam here, but with a little bit of sanding and some dremeling, you can completely get rid of the seam at the top, on the sides, and even at the bottom, All right? So lots of sanding, dust fingers, okay? So much sanding. All right. I'm gonna put these guys together. We spoke about this earlier in the video, so I'm just gonna assemble, fast forward, catch you guys later. All right, so with all of those little pieces out of the way, well, most of those little pieces out of the way, let's focus on some of the larger stuff here. So this is the, the base layer. This is the part that's gonna be your palm, right? Underneath your hand. This is our top layer. This is going to be the top. Okay? And this is uh, the bracer part of it uh, that's going to connect to this one. Right so I'm going to go ahead and heat these up, um, glue them, this to itself, and I'll heat these up and give them a little bit of a dome shape, and I'll catch you guys for the next thing. So slight curve, as you can see, a slight curve on the inner piece, a bit of a taller rounded shape on the thin top piece, okay, the bracer part, it's been put together, and now what I'm going to do is go ahead and flip this. I've cut up four strips of 10 millimeter foam. And I'm going to be laying them down like so on the inside of this piece, okay? Uh, and then cutting them off once they get to this point. So I'm gonna build a wall of four of these onto this base, all right? So it should give me something thick like this so there's enough room for my hand and electronics or anything else to go inside of. Okay. So yeah, that's basically what this next step is going to be about. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through that process and catch you guys in the next step. All right. Once you get to your one, two, three, third layer, okay, uh, you're going to pause it real quick and you're going to get a sense of where your hand kind of falls and where you want. If I put my hand in the hole, I naturally have this diagonal that I'm looking at here. So that's probably what I'm going to want to do with my handle. And your handle can be anything. It could be a, a, a pencil. It could be a hot glue stick. You know, anything that's solid you can put inside of your piece. So what I've done is I've made marks where my handle is going to be. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use my X-Acto knife and just cut that little section out. Okay. Might be a little hard to pull out because I just glued it, but as long as you can get most of it out, you should be good to go. So, not the cleanest removal, but enough that this can fit, and that's all I need. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this so I can cut it to size, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on that. And uh, after that's done, put the last layer and start putting the, uh, the cap on top of it. As you can see, this part is ready. It can be held, moved around, flung around, 
it's sturdy, it's nice, and it's comfortable. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and add this top piece. As you can tell, I do have a bevel on the side, on the inner side of this piece here. You don't necessarily need the bevel for this step, um, but I do find that it makes a, a, a cleaner, uh, nicer finish uh, if you do. And it allows you to just have the seams barely show uh, at this point. The reason why I say it doesn't matter as much is because in the final product, you don't really get to see where that seam ends up anyways. Um, so uh, take that however you like. It's a DIY kit, you guys do whatever you want. I'm just giving you guidelines. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this. Got our two main parts done. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the two. All right. So it's a thin lip here. Uh, so just make sure that you glue it flush right? with the top here and flush with the bottom there and just kind of play with your edges, make sure that they're uh, on tight. All right. So I'm gonna take my time with this one because it can get a little tricky. So when gluing this, you want the seam to almost be at the very top here. Okay, so seam lines up with top here, like that. Right? That's the curve that you wanna follow, that's the curve that you wanna give it. So I'm gonna start that off right there, glue that down, and then follow the rest along. So, put that down, follow it here. Complicated, just it's a little can be a little bit tricky to get the seams to line up the way that you want to, but with enough pressure and a little patience, you can get it to fit exactly how it's intended, which is what we have right now. All right, so there we go. So seam right there. It it doesn't need to be exact; it just needs to be within that top layer of foam, right? This seam right here, because that will make sure that this is uh, spread out nice and even so that you hold it, it looks nice and proper, All right? Again, make sure you give your glue enough time to dry. I have this separating on me right now, um, but it should hold up eventually. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the next step. All right, so now we're gonna play the measure and glue game. So basically we have these three pieces, okay? So what I'm doing with this first piece, I'm trying to find the halfway point of the bracer, uh, left and right, and that's gonna pretty much dictate where everything else is gonna fall in place. So this first piece, uh, there's one that's slightly longer, so this is the one that you want on top, and then the thinner one you want at the bottom. And then it should, come past this a little bit. And if you don't want this to come past it, you can always mark that, cut it off, and section that off, all right? So we have our marks for the left and right on the top piece. While we have it in place, we're gonna also make marks on the bottom piece so that we know where our glue starts and ends. Okay. And this is completely up to you how deep you want this in, how far you want it to come out, etc. etc. And then third thing we'll do is once these are installed, we'll place the top piece, uh, making sure that we glue it down evenly so that we get a semblance of a circular shape inside here uh, once it's all said and done. It'll always end up being a little oblong when you're holding it on its own, but you have to make sure that uh, you're giving it the spacing necessary so that it can 
look like a circle once it's inside. And an easy way to do that is to just grab some masking tape and glue it to the sides. Figure out where your positioning is going to be and just make a couple of marks on the foam so that when you glue it down, you know exactly where it's gonna go. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through these processes real quick. Catch you guys at the next step. Okay, so we're looking at something more or less like this, right? I've uh, gone in and given it some flair, raised up the edges a little bit, pinched the spine so that it can be nice and pointy. And I made sure that um, these parts just kind of end right at the edge there. I have a little overlap here, but I don't mind it. If you don't want it, you can always trim that off. Okay, and again, left this empty so we can put a cut down here and just kind of bend that inwards. Uh, so, so far, so good. So next step I'm gonna do is what I talked about earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some masking tape. I'm gonna start putting down uh, these pieces so that it lines up the way that I want it to and forms an actual circle at the end of the day. So there will be some bending and forcing the foam to be in a certain position in order to find that happy medium. So it's looking like something like this. Good, good sticky tape will uh, do you well in this step. This masking tape is not doing too good for me right now. But just to convey the idea to you guys. So when you put this tape down, you can more or less mark where your um, edges are. So like this point here falls down here. So I'm gonna mark it here. This point falls down here, I'll mark it here. Just go throughout marking where uh, the points of this falls. That way you have somewhat of a guideline as to where you're going. And then as you're gluing this, you're just going to bend um, the panels in or out to get the perfect circle at the top, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through that process and catch you guys for the next step. Once you've laid down your piece, uh, even if it's not super perfect, you can always go back into the foam and just kind of bend in or out um, the lip of some of these parts, spread them out and make it a little bit more uh, circular. I think this, yeah, that's the right word, circular. And you can push everything in. Just kind of get that. something coming out of the hand. All right. That is pretty much it for that. Now we can start with some of the other stuff, which is gonna be these pieces here that we haven't done yet. And we're gonna end up being this stuff here on the inside. I don't know what these are. I think I saw them in the preview. There were like no reference images for this thing whatsoever. Um, so these pieces, they're flat, as you can see, okay, we've already beveled them, but we're going to curve them ever so slightly and we're going to glue them together, longest part to longest part first, okay? And there are two sizes, so there's the small ones and there's the big ones. So again, longest side to longest side glue like this. I'm gonna fast forward through those steps to catch you guys for right. Once you're done assembling these, obviously you can get rid of the seam line on the surface by just sanding it nice and smooth. Okay. Cleaned up all of my little extra pieces. Let's get to the underside real quick. So remember these two pieces that we have cut out, we're gonna have one of them towards the bottom, like this. Try and center it as much as possible. And then 
the second one like this. Okay. Center it as possible. And then you're going to grab these guys. Uh, you might want to heat and curve them before you glue them down. Uh, I'll fast forward through that process. But you just want to mark where it is that you think these are going to end up because they kind of, one, need to overlap each other, and two, just kind of end up like this. All right, I'm hoping you guys can see this, or I will show it to you in the finished version like this, okay? So flat, one underneath, one on top, one on top, one on even more on top, okay? And then they kind of get squared off at the edge there. So that's what we're going for at this point. So just, again, it's the uh, measure and glue game that we're playing. So we're figuring things out, placing it where we feel um, it looks best, and then we're gluing it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through that process, get all these uh, six pieces situated, and I'll catch you guys for the next step. All right, so just to do one with you guys real quick. So I'm trying to find the more or less same position Next, add a little bit of glue to the sides of this because they do overlap a little bit. side and top. I'm going to go ahead and put magnets in the fingers. I'm going to attach these guys, the small ones, go here like this. One, two, three. Okay. The larger ones go here. One, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And you want these one, two, three, fours to be where your fingers are going to be. So where each one of these knuckles are there's actually holes for magnets where the finger comes out now you guys don't have to do magnets you guys can do dowels you can do uh you can glue it permanently i did magnets because it's much easier to transport this is a very oblong prop uh to kind of have around so uh, i did magnets for most of the protruding pieces like the side edge blade thingy and the uh in the fingers that way it's a little more uh, travel friendly, right? I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through the process of adding these little guys, the knuckle pieces, okay? And then I'll take my time and explain how I do the fingers for one of them, and then fast forward through the rest. All right, so as you guys can see, I've made some marks here that delineate where, uh, the fingers are going to fall. So I grabbed the thumb as the first reference point. Right, The thumb always goes next to this giant circle thing. So when you're using your patterns, do be sure to flip uh, your pieces because they are left and right um, when you're working on stuff. Okay, So I put the thumb there as a 
general rule, uh, the pinky is kind of opposite the thumb, almost on the same plane. So this is as close as I could get it while still being under um, one of the wings of that top plate here. Okay, And then I just put a finger under each um, wing piece here, skipping the one next to the thumb because you have more room uh, next to your thumb than anything else. So thumb, skip one, one, two, three, four fingers. Okay? And that's going to be that. So now what I'm going to do is just add uh, magnets to these. I'm using some 10 millimeter uh, neodymium magnets. Uh, this is what the pre-cut holes were for to begin with. So I'm going to stick these in there and then I'm going to uh, match up their locations, drill, add them on, and we'll add some more details to everything else as we go. All right, so we'll fast forward through that step. Catch you guys for the next one. Okay, so in order to place the magnets now, get some of stuff out the way. In order to place the magnets, I uh, will start off with the thumb. Okay. Put it right there. I've already embedded my magnets into it. So what I'm going to do is grab spare magnets, put them on top of the magnets that are already there, and go back to the position that I had, and lightly press into place and hope that it leaves an impression. Right. And it usually disappears, but it stays long enough for me to see exactly where it is that I need to drill. Right. Uh, the holes for the magnets. And then I continue this process throughout, drill my holes, insert the magnets, make sure that they're right polarity, and then flop, flop. So almost done here, finger number five, stick my magnet in, swipe it out of the way. So what I've been doing is I grab my stack of magnets, I put a little bit of crazy glue or gorilla glue right on the edge and a little bit on the back end. Okay. I've already uh, pre-drilled my holes, so I'm going to go ahead and slide that in, slide out of the way. So just give that a few seconds to dry and we should be able to snap all of the fingers on in a little bit. Given our magnets enough time to dry, I've also numbered them so that uh, just in case my holes were offset from each other, they all match up with their respective slots. So three and four. Alright, starting to look like something guys, okay, and uh, now it's just about uh, adding details, and one of the first things that we're going to do is finally use these guys, this is where that angle that I was telling you guys about earlier comes in super useful, because this slight little 20 degree angle, make sure that you can actually sit it, uh, and once you glue it, it sits nice and flush part right so super simple just measure it out trace it out glue it on and tab it into place okay so I'm gonna fast forward through that process and catch you guys for the next step pieces that we're going to use here is this one we're basically going to weather it to look like this piece right here with like all of the grunge and edge there so I'm going to go ahead and use the Dremel or the uh, hot knife tool to kind of do all of those details all right and so as you can see I have a bunch of uh, two millimeter uh, foam strips laid out this is an optional step so if you want uh, your claws to look like they have like a cuticle so like this piece right here that you see here this is just uh, two pieces uh, well three pieces actually one 
these two connected to each other at an angle so that it falls nicely along the edge there and then another strip on top that gets wrapped around like that and then we do all of the uh, the hot knife work on top of that so definitely optional if you want to go through uh, that step but it's also a part of your patterns right so I'm gonna go ahead and keep finishing up with that <laughs> On to this final piece right here, as you guys can tell, this is already glued on, as well as the little pieces in the back. So what you want to do with this, remember this was the first piece that we worked on. After you're done with this, you want to just kind of organize these however you see fit, um, preferably so that each spike lands on a plate, on one of these plates, right? That's going to be how you're gonna want to organize these. So depending on how you know far or how in you had your plates, everyone's placement is gonna be a little different, all right? So figure that out. Once you have that, I'm going to mark the area where these stay. down temporarily with some tape. I'm going to go ahead and cut these off at an angle, as you can see right here. All right, see how this is cut at an angle? So you're gonna cut it at the angle that corresponds to your piece, all right? Again, everyone's angle is gonna be different, uh, and you can also just dremel it down. So you can uh, dremel a little bit at a time until you get a proper placement for it and then stuff your magnets or just permanently glue it to the piece itself. All right, I'm gonna fast forward through that step and catch you guys for the next one. I'm using my bench grinder on this one, but uh, again, uh, as I said before, you can do this with a Dremel or just an X-Acto knife or blade. bevels in as you can tell I just got to test it out on the uh, the main body itself see if it fits if it does great if it doesn't I'll come back to this but I'll probably cut to the finished product all right so check the fit okay it seems about decent could use a little bit more no, actually, no. This fits just fine. Perfect. All right. Before we do anything to this, obviously, I'm going to take these off first. Okay? So I can paint them because we're not going to put the magnets on this until it's fully uh, done and painted. So another thing that I'm going to do also is give this a little bit of an edge here and just round off the top a little bit. All right, my edge is beveled, as you guys can see, and I rounded off the top a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and seal this with the heat gun. And if you're wondering how I'm going to be able to know where my marks are, I had made uh, small cuts, light cuts to the surface of the foam with the X-Acto knife. So that as I'm heating it up, it's expanding, but it's also keeping the line of where I'm supposed to put my pieces once everything is said and done. All right, uh, almost ready for paint. So now what I'm going to do is basically go through a quick uh, time lapse of all of these details that I'm about to add. So I'll give you guys a preview of what it is that I'm doing. So I have this piece, for example, I'm gonna be using my hot blade and adding like lines and textures to it all the way throughout. Okay, you can do this with a soldering iron. Uh, this is from a wood cutter, wood cutting, wood burning, wood burning kit. Uh, I'll leave descriptions, descriptions. I'll leave links in the description. Uh, 
so that you guys can uh, shop around for one if you're interested. But if you do have a wood burner at home and you have this nice little leaf uh, tip, it's super useful for making these like uh, almost fleshy lines. So that's what I'm doing now and that's what I'm gonna do for the entirety of the build. Uh, as you guys can see, by comparison, there are so many little nicks and cuts and cracks that I've added here. In between where the fingers are, I did like all this fleshy looking stuff. Um, added this texture to the inside, deepened these grooves a little bit. So all of that is going to get added to this piece. As you can see, this is pretty plain, nothing much going on yet, but it's about to look like this uh, in a little bit. So fast forward time. Once you're done with all of your pieces, make sure to grab your heat gun and heat seal everything before you start doing any plasti dip or paints or anything like that. All right. Uh, if you did get the pattern and not a DIY kit, again, I'm not sure if I'll be selling DIY kits of this or not, but uh, your pattern should have this, um, well, pattern <laughs> on the base layer, so you can. Transfer this with Sharpie and you can definitely just kind of like etch this in with um, your hot knife or even a, a Dremel tool. Um, the general pattern that I have going on here, which is kind of what the inside of the palm looks like for this thing. From what I can uh, gather from the uh, reference pictures that I've gotten from in-game and other official art. All right. So we are ready to plasti dip. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this to the paint booth and get painting. And if you wanna go deeper than just your regular etchings on the side, you can go ahead and add some extra detail with the burn tool with this also. All right guys, so three coats of plasti dip and two coats of paint later we can start painting our piece. Now for the base color of this, I used a Rust-Oleum hammered paint. It's kind of like a bronzish color, but it comes out like a dirty metallic. It works out fairly well. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna dry brush a little bit of this uh, bronze on the raised surfaces, raised edges. Of Piece. Pretty much does it. Just a subtle little gradient hit of this bronze. And then I'm going to top that off with uh, some rub and buff. This is going to be a wax metallic ruby finish. So very little of this. I've been using um, a lot of it on the, uh, the tips of the nails and parts of the scale. As you can see here, it has a, a funky look to it. So, um, And this piece here, you can also tell there's a subtle hint of it on this as well. So that's all I'm gonna be doing for this is just adding that subtle hit of that ruby color. I think I can take these off the tape now. One down, two more to go. You get the idea. We're gonna fast forward through this process and catch you guys for the next step. We are done with our weathering, okay? So now I just need to do a few things 
to this itself. As you can tell, there's no hole here. So I had my pre-cut piece from the last one that I made, so I held on to that so I can know the exact size because it fit the 3D print perfectly. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that out. Almost there. Okay. Yeah, more or less the same cut. Okay. There's my 3D printed part. Just gonna go right on the inside and pop right on through. Perfect, nice and centered. All right, you'll notice that on this first one, right? I actually have a little bit of fading going okay. on on this, so I'm gonna go ahead and replicate that on this one as well. Put this aside, let that dry for a little bit, and I'm gonna show you guys how we put the magnets. All right, so these just get put on with some Gorilla Glue or Fazy Glue, whatever you have. Okay, and then here is where a piece is going to go. I'm going to go ahead and grab some contact cement. Let's dry. I'm going to go ahead and apply my pieces very carefully. I want to hide the seams that I have there. Just plug in some magnets. Okay, in case you guys couldn't tell, I popped some magnets in. What I did is I placed them where I thought they needed to go, pressed them up against the skin so it could make an impression where the magnet is. I marked the dot and I'm about to drill these uh, in with the Dremel so I can drop in the 10 millimeter. Yeah, and after your magnets are in, you can just snap these guys in together, put your hand inside of your brand new claw prop, and hack away. Um, fingers still removable, and you can see all of the details that we've added from knuckles to the textures to the inside. To the plating here and the inside of our piece right here which you can paint if you want to it's not necessary no one's really gonna ever see the inside of it and now you have your um, piece of wood or tube whatever it is you ended up using to hold your prop together uh, of course you can also do some uh, lights on your prop so this one has um, kind of like a little LED puck like this on the inside of it this just takes uh, three AAA batteries I'll leave links in the descriptions on where you guys can grab uh, these uh, you can also change the colors because it has a RGB remote control uh, the version that's in there uh, this is another version that you can get at kind of like your local hardware store they're kind of like cabinet lights uh, they don't have the RGB option but they do have uh, different modes and uh, dimmers on off and even a timer if you want to save battery uh, and on the lowest tier, you can do like some fairy lights that you can just organize inside of here. Find a place on the inside to tape it so that it's comfortable for you to reach on the inside of your prop with your little on off switch. And there you have it. So I hope this one was useful. Hope you guys learned something. I know it was a really long one, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of moving pieces. Uh, a lot of small pieces, a lot of detail pieces, and I wanted to make sure that um, anyone who downloaded the pattern or maybe got the DIY kit from the website would be able to follow along and uh, more or less put this together successfully, regardless of their uh, skill level. I do use a lot of advanced tools in the tutorial, but again, there's nothing that I do with my tools that you can't do by hand uh, with you know regular uh, tools that you can find at your local hardware store. All right. So that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, if you guys have any ideas of what you think I should do next as far as like a prop, please feel free to leave a comment 
uh, down below. Uh, I read through them as often as I can. And sometimes I do find inspiration from the stuff that you guys uh, leave me on there. So if it's not a commission or something that I'm personally interested in, I'll look to see if you guys have any good ideas down there that I can tackle next. All right. So this has been Cast from Giveaway Studios, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.